Cool. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Elena, and I work in a project called Ironfish. Um, Ironfish is an, a layer one privacy coin. We just launched our testnet actually earlier this month. Um, and my entire journey actually began with an ETH global event. Um, the way I even got into crypto is because I went to uh, one of the first hackathons at ETH Waterloo uh, and actually jumped to start my entire interest in crypto. So I'm so glad to be still part of this community uh, and to give back. So thank you so much. Um, Cool. So I'm going to post all these slides on my Twitter afterwards. Um, and this is kind of meant to give you an overview of what zero knowledge proofs are, but I also added a bunch of links. So that if you're interested, you can actually go through them um, later at your own time. So what is a zero knowledge proof? Um, or what is a ZKP? Um, and uh, really, it's the ability to prove honest computation without revealing inputs. So the example that I like to use um, is a Where's Waldo example uh, for people who are totally new to zero knowledge proofs. Um, so the story goes that there was a math professor who was trying to figure out a way to explain what zero knowledge proofs are in a very simplistic way. Um, and he was reading Where's Waldo with his five-year-old son. Um, and they're looking at Where's Waldo page where you're supposed to find Waldo. And the father goes, I know where Waldo is. And the son goes, prove it. So it's kind of a perfect setting for how does the father prove to the son uh, in technically zero knowledge um, that he knows the answer. And so uh, what the father does is he takes a huge newspaper. Uh, he covers the entire book with this newspaper uh, with a small little hole that reveals where Waldo is. Um, and the paper is much larger than the book. So it actually gives the son no information about where Waldo is, but it does give the son the proof that the father does know where Waldo is. So this is a very, very simplistic kind of ex explanation of what zero knowledge proofs are. Um, but yeah, but at the core, uh, zero knowledge proofs are honest computation and they are used for scalability and privacy, uh, like Anna mentioned, and there's a ton of projects that kind of demonstrate that. Um, the uh, zero knowledge proofs, and I'll go over like, so many variants of zero-knowledge proofs, um, but there's three main properties that they must uh, satisfy. It's completeness, so meaning that uh, an honest verifier will be convinced by an honest prover. Uh, soundness, meaning that the reverse is true, so uh, if someone's trying to cheat, an honest verifier can figure that out. Um, and zero knowledge, so if the statement is true, then other than the fact that the statement is true, there's no other information that's being leaked. Okay, so brief history, because Zero-knowledge proofs come from such a rich background. Um, so zero-knowledge proofs were first coined as a term by this paper in 1985 by Shafi Goldwasser, Sylvia McCauley, and Charles Rakoff. Um, and Shafi Goldwasser and Sylvia McCauley, I believe, both got the Turing Award um, in 2000-something <laughs> um, for their work in zero-knowledge proofs, which is kind of like one of the highest awards you can get in, in, in cryptography and mathematics. Um, so this uh, particular uh, protocol was interactive protocol, meaning that two parties kind of have to go back and forth um, to, to make the proof uh, actually work. And ZK snarks are um, kind of the first widely used uh, form of a non-interactive uh, protocol. And um, right now, if we talk about ZKPs, most of the time people still refer to ZKPs as ZK snarks. And obviously there are a ton of different knowledge proofs, um, but ZK snarks are, I think it's still at this point, probably the most popular form of ZKP. Um, and that the term of ZK snarks was first coined in 2011. Um, some of these uh, names and authors you might actually recognize today. Um, in 2013, there was a famous paper that came out called the Pinocchio paper um, from researchers from Microsoft and IBM. And that was like the first like kind of general computing application for ZK snarks. Um, and then only in 2016 with, with uh, the paper Groth 16 by Jans Groth um, was it made uh, fairly efficient for us to actually use today. So I'm not gonna go over exactly how ZK snarks work because um, that's kind of a large topic. However, a ton of people have explained it extremely well. So to break up a ZK snark, um, it, there's fairly five steps. So first is computation. So how do we, uh, how do we break down the computation to arithmetic circuit? And there's something called a rank one constraint system. Then we transfer that to something called a quadratic arithmetic program. And finally, last step is a snark. So, if you are interested in learning more, there is a great tutorial that actually explains the first four, step, uh, first four steps fairly well. And the last step um, is explained by Maxime Petkus in his tutorial that goes 
very deeply and very thoroughly um, into how a snark is constructed. So if you're interested, this tutorial is actually amazing and probably the most readable thing I've ever read on Ziggy snarks. <laughs> um, and one, there's another article for BLS uh, three, uh, 12, three one curve. If you ever heard of that one and wondered, what is this curve? Why is it such a big deal? Um, there's actually a great article that explains why it's such a big deal and why it's being used in cross 16 snarks. So kind of long story short, um, there is a statement that gets transferred into a language of polynomials. Um, and there's a prover and a ver verifier and a challenge um, such that there's a kind of a hard-coded uh, common reference string or structured reference string that is used as part of the challenge. Um, and together, all these things kind of create this proof system such that a prover can uh, create the zero knowledge proof that a verifier can then verify. So this is a very kind of high level of, of, of what ZK snarks are. So I kind of mentioned this proof system called Roth 16 or a type of a, a, a ZK snark. Um, and uh, why is it so great? Because it's actually still used today and it's, I think, still probably um, considered the standard today. And zero knowledge proofs are typically created on three things. Prover time, so how long it takes to actually generate the proof. Proof size, how physically large the proof is going to be. And verification time. Um, and for Ross 16 in particular, uh, the prover time is pretty good. Uh, the proof size is constant and it's super small, and the verification time is also constant and really fast. So there's a lot going for Gross 16, and by a lot of metrics, it's still actually relatively unbeatable. Um, there are different proof systems for different like metrics that have beaten Gross 16 in the past, but I think overall, it's actually a very good system. There's also a couple other uh, kind of criteria that ZKPs are graded on um, that I kind of skipped over. So uh, ZK, ZK snarks are great, um, except for one big downside that a lot of people talk about uh, very frequently, which is that they require this thing called a trusted setup. Um, so if you kind of learn more about how ZK snarks work, um, they do require that common reference string or structured reference string that I mentioned earlier. And to get that uh, to be as part of the challenge, there has to be a trusted setup meaning that some people you know, uh, have to come together and provide their randomness. Um, and if all of them collude, then potentially um, the system could be flawed. Now, I think practically the chance of that happening is actually pretty small, um, but people have been kind of questioning whether or not we can have a better proof system that doesn't require this step um, to be you know, better for a decentralized uh, technology. So in 2017, uh, onward, there's been an explosion of academic research in the zero knowledge proof space to figure out, okay, can we use something else uh, to kind of get rid of the trusted setup or at least replace it with something better? Um, and uh, a lot of these new proof systems um, that I'm going to kind of mention really quickly um, actually came out due to this paper of Kate polynomial schemes. Um, and I found this amazing tutorial um, that actually explains them if you guys want to kind of dive deep into exactly how that works. So 2017, um, we had a ton of research. Um, 2018 is when STARS came out. 2019 was an explosive year for new zero knowledge proof systems. Um, this is where Sonic came out, Halo came out, to kind of name some of the more um, famous ones, Plunk, obviously. Um, 2020 was a great year as well. 2021, uh, there's only one that I kind of paid attention to. If there are others, um, please link me. I can update the slides. Um, so there's a ton of these new kind of replacements for Gross 16 that either have no trusted setup or universal setup or some other alternative. Um, and in terms of all of these, I guess the question is, well, which one should I pay attention to? There's so many. <laughs> um, and so I would say probably these are the ones that I would pay attention to. So bulletproofs, um, I believe they're used in Monero um, to, uh, to prove the range proof. Um, Starks, there's an entire company behind it called Starkware. I think they're gonna be actually talking next. Um, Plonk, um, Aztec is a company behind that and they're gonna be talking next as well. Halo 2 was developed by Zcash and I believe their next version of, um, of Sapling that they wanna do is going to be based on, on Halo 2. So these are kind of like the four that I would say like out of all of these, um, if you're curious, I would kind of pay attention to these the most. So still coming back to Gross 16, um, it is, it, it probably has the biggest tool set currently. And um, I'll kind of brush on this, uh, on this tool set a little bit later on as well. 
But there are a lot of what's called DSLs or domain specific languages um, that are written for GRAS 16 um, that make it extremely easy for you today to actually write circuits uh, in a fairly easy way. Um, so it's kind of like the huge power uh, of, of GRAS 16 is this tool set and this community around it of all these people that are doing so much research. Um, Plonk is another one that I want to highlight. Um, and once again, I think ASIC is, is, is going to be talking next. I don't want to steal uh, their fire, but they're working on something called Noir, which is domain specific language for Plonk. Um, so that this is a, an entire kind of ecosystem that's still kind of earlier than GROC 16. And so you, you're probably not going to have as rich of a tool set, but there's a ton of research happening here as well. The thing about Plonk is that um, for the first time, there's a proof system that um, even though for some metrics it's still slower than GROS 16, there's a ton of promise that with this research it's going to be seeing uh, a lot of improvements. And then HALO is the other, the other one that I mentioned, or HALO 2 in particular. Um, and this, this is the proof system that's being developed by Zcash uh, team currently. Um, and I'm not, I think it's still like a work in progress. I'm not entirely sure how much you can do today with it. Um, but if you want to learn how Plonk works, um, which is the thing that's actually uh, related to how HALO 2 works, um, there's a great tutorial that I linked by Vitalik uh, if you want to kind of dig, dig more into it. Okay, so this entire talk so far has been kind of theoretical about all these like different proof systems. Um, and I do want to highlight uh, some examples of where zero-knowledge proofs are used in Ethereum today to kind of give you inspiration of how achievable it is to actually use them today for different applications or smart contracts. So first category is gaming. So for Ethereum, everything's out in the open, the state is public. There are so many games out there where you might not want that. <laughs> uh, you might want some privacy. There are certain games where you know, a player state should be hidden for whatever reason. Um, and currently it's really hard to do because everything's out in the open. Now with zero knowledge proofs, there are ways that you can do that. So one obvious example is Dark Forest. And Brian Gu is gonna be talking next about, about this as well. But what's amazing about this game is that a player has some hidden state. Uh, primarily the coordinates of their planets. Um, and they're able to do this with zero knowledge proofs. If you haven't tried it, I highly, highly recommend it. Everything is in the browser. And so it kind of shows you the power of zero knowledge proofs. Um, I think there's a misconception that the computation is super expensive, which to be fair, depending on the computation it is, but there's a lot of these applications that don't require really complex uh, operations. And so there's a lot you can do uh, with a very good user experience. So Dark Forest happens entirely in the browser. Every time you make a move, you actually make a zero knowledge proof. Um, and it's a very good user experience. So the other category obviously is private transactions, um, which kind of Anna mentioned as well. So again, same question. Ethereum has everything out in the public. So if you did want to do a privacy layer, how would you do it? Obviously, zero so knowledge proofs to the rescue. So another notable example is Tornado Cash. Um, and it's a privacy layer on top of Ethereum where you can in zero knowledge proof sort of like mix your, your coins with, with, uh, with, some, some, with somebody else. And then obviously scalability, which is kind of like the, the theme for, for today. Um, and there's a ton of ZK Rollup projects, some of which are actually gonna be speaking after me. Um, there's Starkware's Starknet, which uses Starks, not Snarks. Um, there's Matterlab, ZK Sync, and I believe they're gonna be uh, talking today. There's Loopring, um, and I believe Anna mentioned uh, a lot more others. So this is once again, of how do you do scalability, uh, scalability with your knowledge proofs. So for things that I've, um, so in terms of like, okay, you were, you know, Ethereum developer trying to figure out a project, you're inspired, um, what can I use today? So Socrates is probably one of the earlier projects uh, for how to do a DSL with domain specific language for uh, ZK Snarks. Um, so Socrates is great because it provides really good, good documentation and kind of handles everything for you. So it's a kind of a pseudo language that does circuit construction for you in the background. Um, and then it actually auto generates this literally verifier smart contract for you that you can very easily deploy um, so, that, so that you can verify your proofs on Ethereum and then create them you know, somewhere else, like let's say in your, in your browser application. The one that I think is probably most used today is Circum and SnarkJS. So the two previous projects that I mentioned, Dark Forest and Tornado Cache, actually use um, uh, Circum. Um, and Circum is kind of amazing. They've, they've done everything in JavaScript and Wasm. In fact, most of their implementation is in JavaScript, which I remember like when they first came out, there was 
kind of doubt of whether or not it could work or it could work efficiently. Um, and so it's really cool to see that it's actually becoming like a very dominant uh, choice for DSLs for ZK snarks on top of Ethereum. They have a great tutorial that I linked there uh, and it's really easy to get started. They also help you with the trusted setup as well. Um, amazing project, highly recommend if you're inspired to do something with your launch proofs day. Other notable uh, languages that I kind of mentioned earlier, there is something called Zinc from Matter Labs. Um, and this is kind of a, a custom language that's a bit more uh, similar to Rust. Um, and this is this was designed by them uh, primarily for ZK Sync. Um, then there's another language called Dwar. Once again, I think Astic is coming, um, is, is gonna be giving a talk after me. And it's a domain specific language for Plonk. Um, so this is not ZK Snark, it's a different uh, 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 general knowledge proof uh, system. Cool, and that's it. Hopefully the goal of this talk was to get you guys inspired. Um, so I hope you have questions. I don't know if we have time for questions or if that's a thing that's allowed here. I think we have a little bit of time actually. Um, I know there's at least one question uh, and I'm waiting for a few others, but one of the questions was actually about your project, Ironfish. Oh, cool. Uh, do you like, are you, Ironfish is focused primarily on snarks, correct? Like that's what you've decided to use. That's correct, yes. Would you, like, is, is that sort of something you'd consider switching out if some of the other tech gets better? Like even some of that like tech we talked about that doesn't need trusted setups. Yeah, totally. I mean, the way, the reason why we went with it is because it has such a rich tooling um, and because of the metrics, like it, for a lot of use cases, it's still fairly unbeatable. If you're going to be using something um, that's going to be saved on a blockchain, uh, proof size proof size of under 200 bytes is like a great metric to have because, like you know, whenever you whenever you're saving something on the blockchain, space is definitely something that is a huge yeah. a huge concern. Um, so kind of that combined with all the other metrics make it at least for us, it made it a pretty clear choice. Nice. Um, why do you think you mentioned that there was this like you kind of listed all of these pro the the research that had come out year by year. Oh and yeah, 2019 is yeah. just this boom. And I know what you showed was like the, the non-trusted setup kinds, but the general research was huge. So do you have do you have any sense for why that happened in that year? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Um, I think like that year in particular was kind of experimental for different polynomial sch uh, schemes. And I kind of mentioned Kate, but I believe Kate came out in 2010. And so the question is like, well, why, did, why hadn't all this happened earlier? Yeah. Um, and I'm not, not entirely sure. I think like the ecosystem was kind of like what you were saying during your intro um, was kind of like ripe for the taking. Like a lot of people care about privacy. A lot of people care about scalability. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, genealogy proofs, which used to be like kind of a niche topic, you know, from the eighties um, was kind of gaining more and more traction. Totally. Yeah, I think that too. I actually think it might be the scaling, the, the fact that scaling became such a clear need to just sort of push this a little faster. I'm not sure because like uh, ZK Rollup is using Pro 16, uh, or at least like the very first uh, example by Barry Whitehat, I believe was using Pro 16 um, on a different curve on, on the Ethereum curve, um, but actually, you know, relatively pretty well. And I think like uh, in terms of metrics, I believe it's still probably the fastest one uh, despite all this research. So I don't know, I think like, acad like academia like might've gotten excited that, you know, for the first time ever, their research <laughs> yeah. has a much shorter life cycle. Like, you know, usually it takes like 30 years for you to like write a paper and then see it like live in action. And True. here it's a matter of months um, for that life cycle to actually happen. Yeah, I, one other thought is it maybe like some, it, there had been some proof that like it could exist in blockchain too. Like that connection point had been made a few years earlier by Zcash. And at mm. this point, like it was clearly like, it, it was there to stay. I don't, these are just some ideas. Um, <laughs> okay, another question. Can someone, how can someone get up to speed if they want to understand the tech and math behind snarks? That's a great question. Yeah, um, so I'll post these slides. Um, the other link that I'll add onto these slides somewhere um, is a GitHub link. Um, I believe it actually was started by Matter Labs or somebody at Matter Labs, and it's called Awesome ZK Snark Links, I believe. And it's a compilation of a ton of tutorials and a ton of reading material for people who really want to dive in. So I'll add that to my slides before posting them on Twitter for those who are interested. Cool. So I'm I'm just gonna hold off a sec to see if there's any other questions. Oh, I think we are. I think we're good. Great. Okay, so I'm going to 
so I'm going to invite Alex uh, Ozdemir up. And thank you so much, Elena, for the talk. Thank you. I'm excited to, uh, I'm excited you shared this with this audience. <laughs>